Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have three designs today. They're all exactly the same. There are three different video sets for this particular pattern but it is all the same pattern. So no matter which one you clicked it will still take you to this video. So what we have today is that there's three different designs. I'm gonna tell you a little bit why there's three and we're gonna go from there first. So this design has actually been around for a long time and it originally came out in this coloration. So you can see that it was like the burgundies and etc. But those colors actually got discontinued in time. So therefore this pattern pretty much has been obsoleted. So it shows this example here but there is actually no color breakdown for you to be able to follow. So because the colors got discontinued. So you can look at that photo and determine the close colors that you have access to. It was then modernized to this blue here where it was using the really beautiful Karen Simply Soft colors. They were both Simply Soft but it's been modernized and it's using some Heather yarns and etc. in order to have that really nice modern touch. It was then continued into this pattern here which was Karen uh, Kindness yarn which was that charity based uh, yarn itself and therefore using the colors within there. So you see that these two here look very similar in the way that they worked up but they're actually using two different brands. So either uh, one you go it's still pretty awesome. So there is a crochet diagram so the written instructions for both of these patterns are exactly the same information and the pattern uh, diagram is also the same. So let's take a look at that next. As we start to look at this diagram don't forget the stitch keys down here and everything in this pattern has been indicated here with what to do. So let's zoom into this. To do this pattern it's in multiples of 32 plus 2. So you will crochet in a chain of 32, 32, 32, 32 and when you're satisfied with the width of it you just add two chains at the end to have the balance. You will take a note because this is a chevron and you see that it is going up and down in a pretty significant way. The chain is actually much longer than you would expect it to be because it goes up and down it actually will compress the long chain and make it go up and down so therefore it'll pull it in. So you'll see that it's chaining of 258 which takes into account the multiples plus that two and uh, but if you would like to customize it maybe for a baby blanket and etc. just crochet multiples of 32 and then make sure you add two to the chain. So just be uh, conscientious of that so that you can understand on how things are gonna go together. There's also a repeat pattern in this. Let's talk about that too. So you'll notice that the colors are really kind of interesting. They're not actually the standard kind of like you know ABC, ABC and they're also different widths of there. So the instructions actually will give you that information on how many the, the striping rows. So you will see that right here. The striping pattern four rows of A, four rows of B, six rows of C and etc. And these are the 30 rows that make the stripe repeat. So once you get those 30 rows done then you continue again. So that, that's how you're gonna work that out. So I'm gonna leave that for you to be able to follow on the diagram and when you look at other photos you can kinda clearly see that also too. And that's what really kinda makes it really nice and fun is that it's not so like ABC, ABC it's really kinda fun. So we're going to be doing a repeat pattern itself and the repeat pattern is the stitch work and the stitch work is going to start on row number one. So there's a foundation row to begin, a setup row they call it and then rows number one through five is the repeat pattern to do this over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do today is and I'm gonna get yourself started and I'm gonna show you rows number one through five and you can reverse the video back in order to do it. The colors that you can get from the die are from the instructions itself and it's just actually pretty cool and it's actually not that hard. So it's recommending a five millimeter size H crochet hook and I wanna verify that is this truth for both of them and it, and it is. So that will work out and I'm gonna grab some Simply Soft yarn. I will also show you how to change a color at some point in this tutorial as well just to make sure you have it. Just keep a note that there is no border. So once you get this done you're done so there's no side border or top or bottom border as well. So let's uh, continue now and let's begin uh, the setup row which is gonna get yourself started today. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot and we're going to either chain 258 like it states or you can do the multiples and changing the size. So for myself I'm not gonna do the whole blanket here on camera. I'm just gonna do a small swatch. So I'm going to do the multiples of 32. So let's just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So either do 258 or do multiples of 32 plus 2. I will see you at the end of the last multiple. 
So I've done two sets here of 32 and I just have to make sure that I do the extra two chains at the end to have the balance. So you'll see how long it is now but once we start going up and down you're going to notice that it's going to significantly reduce this if you look at it from a perspective like this. Okay so you can see that it just automatically just goes on in. So let's uh, start the setup row and we're now going to start with our double crochets and let's begin to do that next. As we begin to do the setup row we're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So let's uh, do that. So you're going to just see the one, two, three and four. And I would turn it around and get the back hump of that or the back bar of that chain and you want to double crochet in that one. So you essentially just created two stitches. So there's one and then two. So when you're going down in this one you need a total of 14. So if this is one and two you're immediately gonna go to the next one. So let's just count to the number 14. So the next one would be three. Staying on the back hump of the chain. This is four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. This is ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. And fourteen. So verify that you have fourteen going down. So that includes that beginning one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So now we're going to skip the next four chains. So one, two, three, four, and go to the fifth and double crochet. So we're now at the va uh, the bottom of the valley. Okay. So that one plus thirteen more, so fourteen altogether is gonna make up the next set going up. So let's start counting those. So we have two so far. You can see two and three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So we just now made our way to the peak. I would probably count that just to make sure. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Once you have your confirmed 14 I want you to chain 3. So 1, 2, 3 and starting in the very next chain I need you to go down for another 14. So I'll, I'll stick with you on that one. So you're just gonna go down 14 and then you're gonna skip the next th uh, four chains and then go up for the next 14. So when you're gonna continue across you're just gonna keep going up and down until you get to the very end of your chain. So the very end there will be 14 going up and then you're finally finished. So at this point you got one done so you're gonna do the other 13 so it gives you 14. You're gonna skip over the four and go up 14 and then do exactly what you just did here and then go down and up and down and up and then eventually you'll end up in the up motion at the end of the chain and that's where I will meet you in just a moment. So eventually you'll come to the very end. You're in the up motion. So when you just kind of work it all out you're gonna see it's gonna go up and down. So let's just back you out a little bit just to see this magic happen and you're gonna do that and so it'll obviously be a lot wider for you. So we're gonna turn and work and begin row number one which will be the start of the repeat and so when you need to start the repeat this is where you'll end up coming back to if you need the video to continue on. So we're now going to begin row number one and we're over here and so we're gonna chain up three which will count as a double crochet and you're going to double crochet in the same one. So you have two double crochets coming out of the same one. The next one 
the double crochet will have two double crochets as well and then you're gonna start skipping over stitches. So you're gonna chain one skipping over one and you'll do that all the way down. Like before how you skip four chains you are going to skip the middle four double crochets. When you do the double crochet here you're going to skip the four and double crochet and create your spaces. So what I would think about doing if I were you and it was your printout I would say one, two, three, four, and five. So there's five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. And that'll help you keep count as you're going across so that you can physically see it. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's just something I would do for myself because I just did it and that's something that I, that I think you should do too. So let's begin row number one. So let's begin row number one and we're going to just chain up three which will count as a double crochet and you're gonna double crochet in this exact same stitch so that you have two coming out of that first one. The next stitch if you recall has two double crochets too. So you need that growth to happen properly on the peaks like this so that you can keep it in balance on, uh, like a flat edge. So now you're gonna chain up one and skip one and double crochet in the next. How many spaces did we count? We counted five so there's one space. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So that's two spaces. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So you want a total of five of those spaces to make it easier for you to remember. So now let's look at the space. So we see one space two, three, four, five. So when you look at it here you're at the base. So you can see the next four are part of the base. So two here, the space and two here. So those are the four that you're gonna skip. So you're immediately gonna come to the next one after the four and double crochet and start skipping to going up. So see it pulls it together. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one. So keep an eye on those spaces. So we have two spaces so far. Don't include that, that center one. So you have two. This is three, four, and five. So you have your five spaces. So after the fifth one, this one here has to have two in there. So that this one here is has an extra double crochet in it. So you see that there's five spaces. So then the, the one after it has two into this one and then two into the one just before that space. So you have two into this one. You're gonna skip this last stitch which is the peak and then you're gonna go right into this chain three. So don't put anything in this stitch right here. So in the peak what you're going to do is put two double crochet and then chain three. So one, two, three and then two more double crochet in there. So it's like turning a corner of a, of a motif really, of a granny square. So going down the other side you're going to skip the first one out. So don't put anything into this one and put two double crochets into the next one after that. And then you're going to start your spacing from this point. So then chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Okay, chain one, skip one and how many spaces are we looking for? If you said five that's the right answer. So I got one, two, three, four. So I got one more to do but I'm also looking towards the bottom to also help me. So there's the bottom. So that's the last one going in and the next four are part of the base. So I'm gonna skip those and double crochet into the fifth one away and start going up. So then I'm gonna create the space, chain one, skip one and you're gonna do your five spaces going up. So you're just gonna go up and down all the way across and then eventually you're gonna be like me and you're gonna hit the end of the, the line. So how many spaces do we have? One, two, three, four. So chain up one, skip one. So the very final one here has two double crochets in it after the space and then the turning chain 
has two double crochet in it as well. So go right into a turning chain, don't go into a space and that will conclude off row number one. So when we back you out, this is what we see. So we're going up and down just like this and this will complete off row number one and it looks pretty awesome. So let's uh, move on to row number two next. Let's start row number two, turn your work. Okay, so let's uh, begin and we're gonna work with single crochet this time. So we're gonna just chain up one and in the very first one you're gonna put two single crochets in it. So one and two and then the very next one after that is two single crochet. And then now we're gonna start working our way down. So when we go down, we're just going to fill in each one of the um, spaces or the single crochet with the single crochet. But what we need to ignore is the first space, or sorry, it's the last space here before the edge. We're going to ignore these two double crochets and we're gonna ignore this chain one space two. So look at it from this perspective. Okay, so space, double crochet, double crochet space. Those are the four you ignore. So let's just single crochet starting in the very first stitch that's available to you and if it's a single crochet, uh, or sorry, if it's a double crochet fill that in. If it's a chain one space fill that in as well. So just go right into the space itself. So I'm looking to the four that are at the base of the valley as the ones to skip over when I get there. Okay. So there's the last double crochet in there. So now we see a chain one space, double crochet. We can see it's the point, a double crochet and a chain one space. So this double crochet is where I wanna finish and then I'm gonna jump to the other double crochet that's over here. And then I'm gonna just single crochet and then go up. So I'm gonna fill in this double crochets and the chain one spaces. But what I need to watch for now because it's the middle of the afghan, so it's not an edge, is that the very last double crochet that goes up I have to skip like we kind of did before. And I'm not sure why I said the word kind of but we did. So we did. So I'm looking towards doing this. So what we have here is that we have to have um, two sets of double or uh, of two <laughs> single crochets. So what I want to do in the next one, so it's the one just before the end. Okay, so it's there. There's gonna be two single crochets in that one. So one and two and then in the chain two space there's gonna be two single crochets. So one and two and I'm still gonna chain three like I did before. So one, two, three and then two single crochets again in that space and two single crochets again. So like before we're gonna skip the first double crochet out and just come immediately to the second one and put two single crochets in that one and then work your way down again. So then just each double crochet going down and chain one spaces are gonna get filled in. So you're looking for the four stitches at the base that you're going to skip over. Noticing that I'm not really counting, I'm just doing it visually. So here's the base. So that's the last chain one space before the point. So I wanna skip this one. So I'm in the double crochet right before that and I wanna skip this space, these two double crochets in this space and immediately just come to this double crochet here and work your way up. So because it's an edge, you're just gonna continue to go single crochet up and the very final two stitches which will be a double crochet and the turning chain will each have two single crochets in it. I feel like I'm mansplaining in this whole thing a lot so I'm, I apologize if I'm too talkative. So the last two, the double crochet has two single crochets and then the turning chain has two single crochets too. So I'm gonna change color just for the kicks of it. So let's uh, determine it when we're gonna change color and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So this blanket relies on you changing colors. Of course you can use self striping yarns but I think forcing the color change is better. So what I want you to do, the last one that we just did, the last single crochet, I want you to pull out and I want you to redo that one. 
Okay, so there's still gonna be two single crochets in the last one but what we need to do is finish it differently. So we're just gonna single crochet but before we pull through our uh, yarn over and pull through the final two you're gonna put the new color on. So I just use a slip knot and I'm gonna pull that color through and so that'll finish it. So what I want to do is get rid of this other color here and I cut it long enough so that I can throw it through a tapestry needle because it's the best way to do it and I kinda just leave it suspended there at this time and I will deal with that later. So I'm going to turn my work and then we're going to begin then row number three. So back to the diagram we go. We're going on row number three. So the first two have two double crochets. So the chain three is one and then the double crochet into the same. So you got two and two and then you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way down. You're skipping the four in the center again. Do you see the commonality there? Every time you're skipping is four. So then you're gonna work your way up. So the second last one here is gonna have two double crochets. You're going to skip over the last one here and then just do your corner, your corner point. So two uh, double crochet, chain three, two double crochet and when you start in the down motion again you're gonna skip over the first one and put two into the next and then just go down. So let's just count how many that there's down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I kinda knew that it was 14. A because I assumed that it was because this was 14 as we did that as we did it. So um, it kinda keeps that balance just to, to know that for sure. So let's do row number three. So I'm gonna keep the blue color here, this one, as just onto the side and I'll deal with that later. But what I want to do, this straggler here which is the loose end of this color is that I do wanna bury it as I'm going in this one. But you can also do a tapestry needle if you wish. So you can review how to do that. So let's just chain up three. So one, two, three and if you wanna hide it like I'm going to you gotta make sure that it stays on the line. So when you double crochet into the exact same stitch to, to ensure that you have two in the first you make sure that straggler is just lying on top so that it gets stuck up underneath the stitch. So because this is the starting row, the starting edge, the next one also will have two double crochet in it. So that's four out of fourteen stitches. So you can count if you want to or you can look for the four that are in the center and know to skip those. Okay, so one, two, three and four. Just for um, tutorial sake I will count. So let's just say there's four done now. So you will just continue and say there's five and six and seven, eight. I'm gonna let the straggler fall out. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 and 14. So there technically should be four stitches in the center. So one two is the one half of the side and three four is the other half. So you're immediately going to go to the fifth stitch away and double crochet going in the up motion. So as I showed you before the stitch just before the end in the point is going to be skipped. So starting in this one you can say that there is one and then you can do the next one. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So looking at the stitch I'm gonna go in the next one which is 11 and so you have the stitch just before the point you're gonna skip that one. So if this is the one just before the skip there's gotta be an extra one in there so make sure that there's two into that one. Skip that one and then go into the very corner. So there will be two double crochet in there. I'm just gonna verify I have 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you're at the peak. So chain three and then two double crochet in and then going down we're gonna skip the first single crochet out. 
So skip this one and go to the second. Put two double crochet in there. So you technically have four already going down. So you can just start and say five and etc. But what I would do, get comfortable looking at the pattern itself and just know to skip those middle stitches so that you don't have to sit here and count. You can just uh, trust in yourself but if something is looking off just know that there's 14 double crochets going up and down. Okay, so I'm looking. So there's two so I can got one more to do. Okay, so there's the two, one, two, three, four. And then I'm just gonna jump over. See that? And then you're just gonna go up. So because you're just gonna go up and down in the same motion, just make sure that you do skip over that extra stitch that is in the peaks when you when you did it before. But on the very final edge which I'm heading to, the final two um, stitches are two double crochet. So the very, very last double crochet of this and the turning chain is going to each have two. And I wanna apologize, it's actually the last, there is no turning chain because it is, um, I was thinking it was double crochet below but it's not a single crochet. So that's that one there. So that's the second last one and then the final single crochet is gonna have two double crochets in there. Sorry about that. So we just wanna make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So then that will conclude off row number three. We have two more rows in the, or two more rows in the repeat and let's turn our work and begin. And we're gonna be starting to do our, our front stuff of the puff stitch. So as we begin row number four, we're gonna chain up three and double crochet into the same one. So you have your two. And you see this is a commonality for these double crochet rows. So then the next one will have two double crochets. And last time we were doing this, we were doing these double crochets by themselves. This time it's gonna be a puff stitch. So you're gonna chain one, skip one, puff into the next, chain one, skip one. So if you really wanna look at it from this perspective, you can see there's one space, two space, three space, four space, and five. And maybe I should do that on camera, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. So if you can see those spaces, it actually is a lot easier to be able to do. And then um, we're gonna go up and down. We're also gonna skip that first one, uh, last one coming out. When you come up, do you see that we're skipping it? You'll do the corners. So two double crochet, chain three, two, and then you'll skip the first one out, double crochet twice in the next and then begin to do your puffs going up and down. Let's do the puff stitch uh, section next. This is row number four. Let's begin row number four. You're gonna chain up three counts as the first double and then double crochet in the same one. And in the very next stitch because it's an edge, it's gonna be two double crochet. And now we're gonna begin the fun stuff, the puff stitch stuff next. So to begin before we do that, we're gonna chain one to create a space skip the next one out and puff. So you're gonna wrap the hook and going into the second one over and you're gonna go in and yarn over, pull through and you're gonna do that three times. You wanna be a, a little bit looser with this kind of idea. So yarn over into the same hook uh, stitch, pull through and then finally one more time yarn over the same one. So you do this total of three times and you end up with all this fabulousness on the hook. So yarning over, pulling it through everything and to seal this shut, you have to chain one. That chain one that I just did is not the chain one that creates the space. So you have to chain one right after it. So if it was me and I was sitting here by myself, I'm going to skip the next one and watch what I do. So I'm gonna yarn over, go to the second one and pull through and do that three times. And I'm gonna give you a different cue verbally to say to yourself. So now that I did that, I wanna pull through. So I'm gonna pull through everything and we know that I have to chain one to lock it. So what at this moment I would say I have to chain two. So I go one is to lock, two is to is the space. Hopefully that makes sense. So skip the next one and let's puff into the next one after that. 
So it's three times. So you're gonna yarn over, pull through everything. Just take your time. And then one is to lock, two is the space. That's how I would say it to myself. And I'm gonna continue to do that then all the way in the down motion. One to lock, two is the space. So you're gonna see a total of five puff stitches. So I see only one, two, three, and four. So this will be the last puff before I start having to negotiate going up the hill on the other side. So one is to lock and then, so after that, so one is to lock you're not gonna create, you're at the base, so you're not gonna create that extra chain. So only at the last one, just one is to lock and then that's it. So you're gonna skip over the four that are in the base and immediately puff stitch into the fifth one away. And we do wanna create the spaces right after them. So one is to lock, two is the space and then skipping the next one and do the next puff. One is to lock, two is the space. I find puff stitching is a little bit difficult at times. So if you're struggling with it, it's, you're not alone with that. So I see five puffs going up. So I did one to lock, two is the space. So I'm just skipping the next space here and I'm gonna put two double crochets into the next one which was the second last one before the peak which is where I should be. And then your peak here is going to be two double crochet and then chain three. One, two, three and then going down. So we're gonna put two into the first one sorry, two into the um, space. You're gonna skip the first one and two double crochet in the next. And then chain one and then you're gonna puff going down like you had been before. Okay, so you're just gonna create your puffs. Hopefully you can see those. So you're gonna create your puffs and you'll have five going down and then you'll skip the four in the, the base here and then you'll have five going up and I will see you close to the end of this row. So just do this up and down and I'll see you close to the end. So I'm coming up to close to the end. So I have my five going up on the outside. So then I'm skipping the next one. I've already done my, my chain one uh, to lock and then two is the space. So I'm skipping one and I'm putting two double crochets into the next one and then the very last turning chain then has two double crochets in it too. So we have one more row to do as part of the repeat. So it's turn at work and we're gonna begin the fifth row and you can see how things are kind of materializing. I am gonna change the yarn. I showed you how to do that already. So but what I will do right now is I'll show you how to um, fasten off this yarn in case you would like to know how to do that. So let's do that next. To fasten off this yarn, so I have my tail from before. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just gonna drag it through the same coloring. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag it over once and when I pull it, I don't wanna change the shape of the edge. So I'm gonna pull through once and then go back in the other direction. It's a slightly different path so it gets locked in. So two and then finally a third time. It just takes a few seconds when you go to do this. If you're confident about yarn tails that you crocheted over, then you can just safely cut it 
here with this one we crocheted right over. But if you would like to have that extra security especially if you're giving this away as a gift just take that tail that you had left over and just put it in a slightly different path again through that same color only. So once and twice and then three times and you can do that. So I'm gonna change to get ready for the fifth row just for the kicks of it and I'll be right back in just a moment. To do the final and fifth on this one here we're just going to start here. So we're gonna chain up three. There will be two double crochets in each of the first two. So the chain three and that one is included as the two. You're gonna come down. So you wanna skip over the four middle. So it, it'll be a chain one space, a, a puff, a puff and a chain one space. So you're just gonna go down and then up. So you want a total of 14 like you had been before. Keep an eye that when you're in the peaks like this you have to skip over that first one right here. And then you're gonna come over top and you're gonna skip over this one to keep the balance. And again you're skipping over the four at the base and then eventually you'll come to the other side and the final two will have two double crochet in it. So it's kind of what we already know from before when we did this in row number three. The difference is that we're gonna be working with the puff stitch but also with the chain one spaces in between. So let's begin row number five, the final, the repeat. So you're gonna chain up three and then it'll be two, another double crochet in the same one. So that gives you two on the edge and I'll deal with this loose and our loose tail later like I did before. The very next one and you're noticing that I'm crocheting right up over top of the straggler is gonna have two double crochets in it. So those are the uh, two of four but what I wanna look for is just look for the two puffs that are at the base and the chain one spaces that are right beside it. Those are the four that you wanna skip. So you can either keep count or just trust in yourself but you can just go down and just check and see if that's gonna work for you and then just watch it. So each one of the um, puff stitches or the double crochet or the chain one space is going to get a double crochet. So if it's a chain one space just go right into the space itself and if it's a puff just go at the top of the puff. Okay, the next one is a space and then a puff, a space. So if you're not sure where to go in the puff just be consistent uh, where you stick your hook. So if it's wrong, if you're always doing it the same way then it's never wrong because it'll all look the same. So here's the last puff before you can get to the bottom. So the next chain one space is the, is the base. The puff is the second one. The puff is the third. The chain one space is the fourth. So what I want to do is aim for the double crochet for the fifth one away which is the top of the next puff. So you skip essentially if you're visually thinking about it just skip over to the third puff and it will be easier. Let's verify we did only have 14 going down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So I'm just gonna continue to double crochet e either in the space or puff and I wanna be conscious of those two sets of double crochets that are at the top. Okay, I'm just double crocheting in the double crochet. You see we have two double crochets before the point. So the next one has to be a double crochet and that one has to have two in there. And then you're skipping the next one and then starting at a point. So it will be two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. And if you wanna verify that your counts are right you can do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 to the point. So then going down you're gonna skip the first one out. Go to the second put two double crochet in there to keep the balance. And then you're double crocheting in either a double crochet, a chain one space or a puff and you're gonna skip over the four in the middle at the valley. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do that and I will see you at the end of this row and this will conclude off the repeat for this particular blanket which you can just reverse the video back and we will see you in just a second or so. So it's been coming up all the way 
I'm just going in the chain one spaces or a puff and then eventually you hit these double crochets right at the end. So because it is a edge the very uh, second last one which be, be a double crochet will have two and then the turning chain will also have two double crochet. So the story then continues back to row number one and you can see how things are working out. So you should have a relatively flat edge. So when it's laying like this you should see it and you will see it on both sides as well. Okay and things do work out so don't uh, panic at all. Um, once things start draping they look actually really quite amazing. So you can go back to uh, row number one to begin. Again you can get your colors from the pattern itself if you'd like to do that or if you'd like to experiment on your own and have some fun with this particular concept. So until next time have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon right here in Yarnspirations or the crochet crowd.com. Bye bye.